Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I'm filming my wrap up for God of Faithful Season for the winter because I finished all my God of Faithful Season books now in February so now I can finally film the wrap up. If you don't know God of Faithful Season is my seasonal reading challenge. There's four challenges for every month so 12 books altogether over the course of three months. And now I'm gonna talk about my thoughts for the books that I read. The challenge obviously started in December and the first challenge was called The Grinch. And it was to choose a dark academia book. I don't know why I said it like that. Why is there a plastic bag where I'm standing? <laughs> Go away! After that I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. And this one is the first book in a series of young adult thriller mystery novels. It's set on a school on top of a mountain where a kidnapping and a murder happened a few years ago. Like a few years after the school opened. And then we have our main character Stevie Bell that starts the school and she's obsessed with this murder and wants to solve it. And a new murder starts happening. And we try to figure it out. So the first three books is like a trilogy where like we follow the same mystery, try to find out that really happened. There's a fourth book that is a standalone mystery in the same world with the same characters. I also filmed the whole vlog where I read the rest of the series, not the first one, but the rest of them. I will leave a link down below if you're interested to see me read the whole series. But overall, I have a really positive outlook is that even a word really positive view on the whole series i really enjoyed it i really like the writing it's exactly kind of my kind of mystery it's very like let's collect everyone together and read up the evidence kind of thing and i just like the characters and i was really really intrigued to learn what had happened so overall really solid four out of five stars the next chance was called naughty or nice and was to make a friend or someone you know choose a very smutty book for you to read or if you don't like smut just like the smuttiest you can handle i don't know but i asked cecilia and they recommended me ice planet barbarians by ruby dixon and i didn't buy a physical copy of this i read it on my kindle and this one basically follows a bunch of women that were kidnapped from planet earth where we live on to become slaves to different aliens and then they meet other aliens on this planet because they crash land which is like a really cold dark planet and they like what to say? They start having sex with them, okay? So we follow one character in the first book, and then I assume in every book in the whole series, I think it's like 27 books or something, we follow a different woman from the crash, falling in love with Ice Five Bavarians on a planet. That's like the whole thing. And then there's a lot of sex. You can say what you want about the plot, you can say what you want about the, the, the story, but you cannot deny that it's a very sexy book and it's highly entertaining, I will admit that. I didn't think it was amazing and I didn't think it was horrible. I was just sitting there with like, what is going on right now? It's very weird. And like, you know, the whole, I think like relationship between, you know, our main character at least in the first one and like the dude she meets. It's a bit like, not unstable, but like, not equal. But it, 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 it's a fantasy book. But if you like, don't like that kind of stuff, then... Just be aware of that. I don't even know how to review this. It had interesting parts, but like, yeah. I gave it three out of five stars, okay? I read it. And like, a part of me might read more in the series because I want some trash smut sometimes, but like, it's not high on my priority because there's so many books. But it seemed kind of fun to just continue here and there when you need something chill and smutty. So, yay. Then the next challenge was called Plum Pudding, and it was to choose a book at the bottom of your TBR list. So basically, you could choose what you meant by bottom so like if it's on your oldest if you literally have a pile of books and it's like on the bottom if it's like you know the oldest on YouTube TBR could also work because that would be kind of on the bottom of your list or it's just something you've been putting off for really long like it could be different versions I took it on the bottom as in I have a list of my TBR and on the bottom like the latest books I bought that would be on the bottom of my list so I ended up with picking like one of the most recent books I had gotten at that time. And it ended up being another smart book, which is Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. And this whole series called Wikivalence is like retellings of specifically, I think like Disney versions, not Disney versions, but the Disney characters. And then they like end up with the villains instead of like, you know, the heroes. So in here we follow Jasmine, we have a thing with Jafar. And it's dark, I won't deny that at all. I found out about kinks that like I didn't consider existed when I read this. Because the first chapter, you know, puts you a bit off because you're like, what is going on? And then you realize what the characters truly want. And then you're like, oh, okay, it makes more sense now. But I can see that this is not for everyone, of course. But uh, it was entertaining. I thought that 
part will be boring because sometimes I'm like, oh, plots, I just want them to bag, you know? But it was entertaining enough. I am definitely going to pick up the rest of the series because I'm curious to see, like, the dynamics between the different villains. I think the next one is Hook and Tinkerbell, like, a version of Tinkerbell, if I don't remember correctly. But, like, there's, like, different versions of, you know, all of them, and I think it's really funny. And it has, you know, some intense like scenes so <laughs> it was entertaining i can't believe i read two rarest murder books in one month because that never usually happens but i treated myself and i think i should treat myself more often and the last challenge for december was family question mark and i wish to choose a book with three or more point of views after that i read the son of neptune by rick ryden i don't know but i forget my copy of this every time we're gonna talk about it in a video i do have a copy of this book it's just in my friend's apartment because I have bookshelves there and I don't bother getting it. So yeah, this is the second book in the Heroes of the Olympus series. But since reading this, I have read the third one, so this is a bit weird to talk about. This one basically is that, you know, after Percy Jackson series and in this one we follow Percy compared to the first book in the series where we don't follow Percy. Spoilers, I don't know if it's a spoiler. But yeah, I can't really talk much about the plot in a way that it's, you know, continuing camp half stuff and the world and finding stuff and finding new threats in the world and yay! And of course I enjoyed it immensely. We get to introduce new characters here, new heroes as in the other book and I really enjoyed them and the different dynamics. Of course I love Percy, it's precious. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's a horrible review, but like, I don't know what more to say. That's how I feel and I don't have more to say. I gave it four or five stars, I think. And we are moving on to January, which is actually this year. It's a bit weird, but yeah. We really need to hold my phone for this one. This is the first one for January. Choose a book that represents one or more of your New Year's resolutions. Example, traveling, going to new worlds, countries, or starting something new, working out more, practicing magic, or learning something new. I chose something for this that fits but doesn't fit, but I still read it, so we're gonna talk about it. I don't really have any goals for the New Year's, except, you know, <laughs> read books and post videos. Basically, I read Radio, Radio that's a sentence, Silence by Alice Osman. And it follows our main character who has been working super, super hard with school for many, many, many years. And she also is a really, really huge fan of this like radio show. I don't know, can't remember the name of, lol. And she meets the creator of the show and he tells her he's the creator and she's like, oh my god. So that's a huge thing. But there's also like a lot of changes in her life. She's in the last year of high school, I guess you can call it. And then she needs to choose like her future and what she worked for for so, so long. And sorry, I'm getting goosebumps because this book, when I read it, literally represented my life two weeks before I read it. Like two weeks before, this was my life almost. And reading it about this character going through like all the shifts in her life that literally was my life was so weird. And I was just sitting there like, this is, yeah. So even though it didn't represent my goals, it represented an inner journey I had gone through very recently. And I think that like, made the challenge re truly fulfilled. It was totally random as well. I was just reading it and I was like, holy shit, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, it had like a really solid female and male friendship in here and I think that's really rare, like where you expect them to come together and, you know, be together romantically, but they were like truly platonic and I really enjoyed that. There's like different drama and different friendships and a lot of inner turmoil. I think Alice Osman is a great author to write these inner turmoils that teenagers feel and it's like very, very accurate because I feel it truly what the characters go through and I think it's done really well. This is what I felt at least in the books that I read by author. But I gave this like almost five stars because it represented so many things so well. But I guess it's more like four now because thinking about it more, I like, I don't think I love it as much as like, it was like the high right after you finish kind of. But yeah, solid book, do really recommend. I think this was a horrible review, but here we are. The next challenge was called Combination. Choose a book that is your favorite color complementary color. And my favorite color is purple, so the complementary color to purple is yellow. And then I read The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is the first book in a, I don't know if it's a duology or trilogy or it's just a series in general. It's the first book in this, sorry, I'm stopping all the time because I don't remember if it's a Y series. Or it's just a fantasy. Doesn't really matter. Point is, we are set in this world 
where people turn into trees. No, I'm joking. But I literally get like kind of disease where like you turn wooden. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I look terrified there because there was a plastic bag of mold outside my window and it literally scared shit out of me because I thought it was a person there and I was like, holy shit, there's no one outside, but it wasn't. It was just a plastic bag. Either way, it's an FF romance. We follow a main character who like used to be in this, not a convent, temple, I don't know, like the word. And she has like a really dark past with that because like that was basically eradicated. <laughs> and uh, she's trying to like hide it that she has like these kind of abilities that she got from being there. Because she was like a temple child. And then she's tasked to help the princess of the country. Because she's also like in prison like I guess I could say. You're like why? How? I don't know how to describe this book. Okay it is complex. And it definitely like takes a little time to get into it. Because I was like why is this like this? Why is this like this? Why are you here? And like the also don't want to give everything away at once because it wants you to like keep your bit on the toes and then see all the pieces fall together. And I think the author does this really well because when you get the pieces, it's like, ah, it makes sense now. So it's like really good how it builds up to like puzzle together and how the story develops is really interesting. You want to see how it's all, you know, gonna end and how things are gonna be solved. It goes much further than I thought it would like in the first book because now I'm like, How's the second book gonna be? I don't know, but I'm excited for it. I definitely enjoyed the vibes of this book and the world and the characters, like everything was enjoyable. I just think like some parts of it was like, I don't remember anymore, but like there were just parts that were, like dragged a bit, I guess. So I think I gave it like 3 from 5, running up to 4 stars. I did enjoy it though. And I'm excited to see what the sequel will bring because I think that would be even more smashing because now like we have the introductory things to all the things. But it was a solid book. And I'm excited for the next one. The next challenge was called Light and Darkness. And it was to choose a book that had a warm and welcoming synopsis. For that, I read the anthology Meet Cute, which is a bunch of short stories by lots of famous wire authors. And it like looks and sounds adorable because like, you know, it's the Meet Cute of lots of different characters. And while I like the idea of this book, where, you know, we literally have a short story where the characters meet and like, how are they gonna follow? Or we don't know if they will last and how relationship will be, but it's literally how people meet and have their meet cute. Also, like, doesn't offer you know that development that people like in a relationship, but it's not supposed to be either. And like in all anthologies, I think that some stories were really, really good, like really solid, and some stories was not as good. They were like, what even is this? I don't like this. And uh, since I am a horrible reader, I didn't like take any notes, so I don't like actually remember. <laughs> Which stories I actually really enjoyed and didn't enjoy because there were some that I was literally sitting there like what? And there were some that I thought was so sweet and fun But I think my favorite was the one in the airport But I don't remember which one it is, but if you read it, maybe you remember. But overall it was cute And I had much more fun with it than I thought it would because I didn't think I would actually think it was as cute as I did But it wasn't perfect but really things are, you know? But yeah, like 3.5 out of 5 stars. So it's not bad, actually. It's just what you would expect, I think, from an anthology. And the fourth and final challenge for January was Diamonds and Opals. And it was to read a book where the main character is rich or the main character has a rich love interest. And for that, I chose The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one follows Avery, who inherits like $1 billion, so like a lot of assets and stuff from this dude she's never ever met before. He was like one of the richest guys in America and she inherited basically all this shit. And you know, he had four grandsons that are handsome and they are like, what? And then there's like this whole game out of it because the grandpa used love games in a way that like he challenged the kids to like figure out these mysteries he put out for them. And is this just another game or is it like, you know, for real, I don't know how to describe it. It uh, ended up being amazing. <laughs> I am a trash with these kind of stories where they end Harry's body and we're like, what are we doing right now? I'm trash with like the romance between all, you know, the different boys that you live with. There's a mystery for like something that happened in the house. Some people are like really sketchy. Some are really like, I don't like her at all, of course. Like, where did she come from? And you're like so intrigued for why did she inherit this money? And I am still not 100% sure. I want to read a sequel and then the third book and final book is coming later this year and I'm so excited for it. It was literally like the best time. Like I gave it five or five stars. It's what it deserves. It was like completely addicting and amazing and yeah. It's almost a bit stupid but it's the kind of story I enjoy so much and I cannot help loving it. So that's great for me. <laughs>
<laughs> and I don't need to say more about it. But obviously it's not a book for everyone, but it's definitely one for me. So yay. And now going on to February, the last month that we are in, lol. First challenge was called Time Consuming, and it was a choose a book that had a main character that had a different hobby or interest than you. And for that, I read This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. And this one is the first book in a, I believe, trilogy, at least series. Like, duology, perhaps? I don't even know. <laughs> and the main character is like a botanist and really interested in flowers and stuff and I'm not so it definitely had an interest that I do not have and it's also a secret garden retelling and basically our main character has been able to like grow plants her whole life and like with magic I mean not like naturally and they just grow around her and it could be dangerous and stuff and then she inherits this house from her aunt because she's adopted and she didn't know she wouldn't inherit this and they moved to that house and there's like lots of secrets around the house and we are like why how why how and she also finds that she's immune to like poisons and stuff and there's like secrets to be revealed about the place and i really liked it as i just said in inheritance games i love it when people inherit stuff and we're like why how this is more like a magical way to like white inherited inheritance games it's just like people being trash and that's fun but uh this was definitely solid i really enjoyed the mystery of it i really like the atmosphere i like the characters i really like that the main character had like such solid parents they were like amazing i love them so much and i like the romance that blossomed i liked everything about it small time vibes and stuff from where the five stars solid book Really enjoyed. Very excited to see where the second book will go because in a way I'm like, I have no idea. I'm really curious to see like how the story and um, everything will develop. So yeah, fun times. Very happy. And next challenge was called Eclipse and it was to choose a romance fantasy sci-fi book or I guess a sci-fi book that has a romance in it. And I read The Prayer of Gods by Nikki Drayden. And this one, <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't really exactly say it was the best pick for this because while it is a sci-fi, it doesn't really have a lot of romance, but whatever. It's set in South Africa and we follow a bunch of different characters and they all connect in a way. Like they all, some develop different abilities. One like the, what's it called, the ability to control minds. And the other one has like the powerful enough to destroy her entire township, it says. But basically what you don't understand at first is that this goddess is coming back and she's pretty evil. And then our main characters have to come together and stop her. And also we said in this world like where a lot of things are done by robots and stuff and not humans anymore because you know we in the future things are fancy. We're just building up to like stuff and I really like enjoy the development, getting done with different characters, seeing and interact like randomly. It was really fun and like like building up to like the final and I really enjoyed that. I thought the final itself was like a bit messy and that I thought it was a bit sad too because I didn't really feel like we got that happy ending but like of course we don't need that but I was just like my my precious but overall it was a solid book it was a bit strange but I liked the strangeness of it but generally what I liked the most as I said is just the characters being like oh shit I have abilities and then meeting randomly and stuff that was fun and yeah I think I gave it like 3.5 out of 5 stars it was fun though, and I'm excited to read more books by the author. Then the next challenge was High Pulse, and it was to choose a Animes to Lovers fantasy book. And for that, I read A Psalm of Storms and Silence by Rosanna A. Brown. And this is the sequel to A Song of Raids and Ruin, I think. And basically, that has Animes to Lovers in it. Here we are, a bit more developed, but still kind of in that vibe. And I cannot for the life of me explain this book, and it's so annoying. So... We are set in this world where, like, we have, like, you know, the princess and the queen and stuff. They rule and they really suppress, like, one sort of people in the land that I now can't remember the name of. And then we have our main characters, Malik, his name is, and his siblings. They are, like, refugees, so they go to the city where, like, they're ruling. And, like, they're already, like, being trashed upon. And then this demon comes and kidnaps the younger sister to our main character, Malik. And then he says that to get her back, he needs to kill a princess. And the princess is our other main character, Katarina. He's dealing with like a lot of other stuff, being a princess and stuff. And there's also like a magical torment and you know, death threats and lots of different stuff. Personally, like the whole thought, like the one of the main characters being sent after killing the other main character it never works out, you know? And like, I'm a bit tired of that is a way that they are enemies in a way, because they're always just like, oh, I can't kill them. And I think like that's a bit like me. But that was the first book. And while, like, it did have, like, some of those stuff that was, like, eh. But it was still, like, super fun and entertaining. In the end, I ended up, like, really, really liking it. Because it was just a, such a fun read. But here in this, you know, we have more developments and stuff. Because 
or will I establish all those things in the first book? And it was just so much fun. I just read it and I had a greatest time. I loved seeing how everything came out. I didn't expect things to go away they went at all. It was sad, it was funny, it was beautiful. The epilogue was stunning. I was just like sitting there like, oh my god, not me tearing up right now. I cheer for the characters so much. I want everything to be okay. I really, really liked how like everything was just resolved and like just the journey being with the characters and like i did enjoy the first book a lot too i sounded very critical i realize but it was just like the series is not perfect but it's like very very fun i'm very glad that i finished it and uh, it was just such a fun ride so yeah i'm just thinking about it now and it makes me really happy and it was just so fun so i'm really happy and i gave this definitely like four out of five stars really strongly because yay and uh, let's go to the next book, which was actually the last. Oh my god! There are challenges called Hard Champ Candy, and you should choose a urban fantasy book not set in the United States. And I chose A Cut of Witch by Nnedi Okwafor. And this one is the first book in this series. And we follow a main character, Sunny, who is an albino. She was also born in the States, but now lives in Nigeria. And she feels like not, you know, Nigerian enough. Not. American enough. It's a whole thing. And then also she's being like bullied and like not treated well because she's an albino. And then she finds out that she has magical abilities and is part of this magical society. So she's like a leopard society is called. And then she starts like magical school. It's gonna be taught her powers. And then she has to you know balance her normal life or I guess ordinary life to like her magical life. And we go like on these different lessons and challenges. And it's lots and lots of fun. I had such a great time. It was really, really cute and amazing. And uh, my character I think is like 12 here. 12 or 13. So she's pretty young, but it's not like a middle grade still because it's like definitely more of a fantasy. And I think in the next book she goes a bit older and then even in the next book she goes older again. So I think it's very interesting to see how the author like is developing the stories instead of like doing like one every year like this normally is when it's fantasy books. I'm actually unsure actually. <laughs> I haven't read other books yet, but I am going to this month. So I'm very excited. And I just thought it was just so, so good and so, so fun and learning about this world and the magic and everything. My heart. Very happy. Very pleased. Would recommend a lot. And this was released in 2011 and I'm just sitting here like, that's like 11 years ago. It's a long time ago. <laughs> and that's so weird because it felt like, didn't feel like it was written then. Not that like you can do that with every book, but... It's just such a long time ago and like, you know, the third book came out this year. So I'm just like, dang, that's so weird because it's like, it's been such a long time. I don't know how to describe it, but truly solid. Okay. Would recommend a lot. Very happy for all the books I picked in February was like the most solid months where like all the books were like really high tier. Very happy about it. Had such a good time. And I didn't mention it now, but like all the books in February had to be by back authors, but as you saw, I did pick that, and like I did mention in my challenge video, I just didn't say it now because I forgot. But yeah, that's it for all books I read for God of Things for Season this winter. And uh, now it's spring, and I'm not sure what's happening with God of Things for Season then. But if something is happening, you will know when it's happening. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts on these books, and you will see me soon in the new one. Leave a leopard emoji down below in honor for Color Witch. Leopard, that's not how you even say it. I don't even know. Goodbye! <laughs>